Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. And uh, we're looking at what's the best response to what's happened in the UK uh, with now a third major terror attack within three months. We're talking about it in the company of Nikita Malik, research fellow at the Henry Jackson Center's Response to Radicalization and Terrorism Center. Welcome back. Welcome back as well uh, to Simon Schofield, senior fellow at the Human Security Center, who joins us from Bristol and uh, from uh, Argentan in Normandy, French Senator uh, Nathalie Goulet. Uh, before the break, we were discussing uh, programs like Prevent uh, that uh, help uh, on the counterterrorism uh, front. Uh, Nikita Malik, remind us what Prevent is and how effective it's been. So Prevent was set up after the 7-7 bombings by the, um, the Labour Party when they were in government in order to enable individuals um, to learn more about, about counter-extremism and, and counter-radicalization and, and to essentially do what it says, which is prevent uh, people from, from reaching the stage where they want to commit violent acts in the name of an ideology, whether that's an Islamist ideology or otherwise. And Prevent was originally part of a much larger remit by the name of Contest, which had four uh, separate Ps, uh, including that was uh, to pursue and uh, to, to, you know, prevent and, and to engage in different ways. Uh, and part of that is also prosecution. So uh, that has been um, uh, put in place. And, and in terms of the second part of your question of how effective it's been, it's been, uh, it's had mixed reviews. I mean, there have been uh, people who have embraced it, who have allowed it uh, to, to function. There have been many changes to it over the last uh, 10 years or so. And, and there's also been an effort by by certain uh, communities and, and certain uh, groups, including extremist groups, uh, to undermine the work of, of Prevent, to call it toxic per se, and, and say that, that what it's doing is, is essentially a thought policing and, and uh, you know, causing people to report on each other, which is, of course, not what it was intended to do. It was intended to, uh, to stop um, violent acts and, and, and acts of terrorism from occurring, like the one we saw on Saturday evening. And, and, and again, it brings it back to something you said in part one of our discussion is what do you do when there's sort of this critical mass of people in a community um, who will either pressure you to be silent or who uh, openly are complicit with, uh, with those carrying out these violent acts? I think one of the most interesting things about undermining the prevent strategy, and, and it's become quite clear after we've had so many terrorist attacks in such quick succession, is that there are no alternatives that have been pre presented by the groups who undermine the prevent strategy. So, I mean, the, the one criticism, for example, of, of, a very common one of calling it toxic, but if it is toxic, then, then what should we put in its place? I mean, what, what programs would you suggest that we have uh, in order to engage with individuals who hold violent ideologies, who, who want to kill for a political cause, uh, and want to take others down with them. What can we do then for those tens and thousands of people who are, who are potential violent radicals to stop them from, from committing violent acts if it's not prevent? And in fact, uh, if you ever question these individuals who are trying to, to undermine uh, some of the government's efforts to do this, they very, um, very rarely, if ever, have an alternative uh, to, to prevent, which is why I find it quite dangerous to, to, to say that we must scrap the program without having an alternative in place for it. Uh, Senator Goulet, let me ask you, because you were saying before the break how France has uh, set up this uh, hotline number for people who, uh, who want to report things. What, beyond that, beyond just <coughs> a, a phone call you can make, what is the strategy? Oh, it's a, it's a big failure right now. And I was listening carefully because, you know, you are talking about 10 years ago. We are just now four, three years and a half since uh, Charlie. And we are still in a, in a full uh, um, disorder regarding uh, the de-radicalization. You know, I, I do prefer recreate the citizen link, which for me is much better because de-radicalization is something else. And right now we, we do not have a clear strategy and I hope that the next government will be able to put it because what we did uh, mainly uh, was to uh, um, put additional uh, criminal regulation and we, we didn't think about prevention enough. That is one of the big, big failure right now for, for us.
So, Nathalie, the, one of the, the issues on this is uh, creating more of a trust between the state, which is very strong in France, and its citizens. Um, things like community policing. Uh, how is that going? Well, r right now, we need to put everybody um, uh, around the table and and created a, a full organization with a with a program and evaluation because the problem is that right now it's like a Mexican army, uh, everybody is making the, the radicalization uh, all over France we, without coordination. You know we we are totally missed in this uh, in this uh, subject and I think that we have to to work because we are losing wasting uh, wasting time. And uh, it very, becomes very dangerous because the people, they are not under survey and they do not have any program and then you don't have any um, evaluation. And um, so it's, it's, uh, it's really a, a, a big concern. Simon Schofield, uh, you hear uh, Senator Goulet there mentioning how it's the Mexican army. Too many generals and not enough foot soldiers and coordination when it comes to having concerted efforts. Uh, uh, you, you, what's it like in the UK on that score? Well, I think that's an important point, and it's actually one Majid Nawaz, who you know is a former radical himself and is the chief executive of the uh, Quilliam, um, says the same. Is well. his four points and his four point plan is that we need a counter radicalization coordinator who reports directly to Number Ten um, Downing Street, the Prime Minister, because the the issue is is that the prevent strategy is rightly spread along a number of government departments, education, communities, and local government the Home Office, it's spread. And we need somebody who can pull all the threads together and make sure they see the big picture and that we're all pulling in the same direction. All right. The, the, the issue of uh, how you uh, uh, tackle the problem uh, has become a political one. We're three days from a general election in the UK. The opposition leader, Jeremy Corbyn, renewing calls this Monday for Theresa May uh, to either be voted out or to resign. She was Home Secretary for six years while the government cut 20,000 police jobs. You cannot protect the public on the cheap. The police and security services must get the resources they need, not 20,000 police cuts. Simon Schofield, your, your reaction to that, and, and in particular this call for uh, more police and more community policing... Um, well, I, I think we need to look at the issue and make sure that we do have the right number of police on, on the streets. I think the fact that the police managed to respond within eight minutes, which is a gold standard, and I don't think we will see a better response than that anywhere, shows that we're not necessarily chronically understuffed. At the same time, I do think that um, an emphasis, and we do have an emphasis on community policing already, but that needs to be expanded further. And it actually links into one of the previous questions we were discussing, which is one, uh, which is why I don't support arming the police, is I believe that the guns, whilst they're more um, secure, it creates a barrier and it creates this us and them culture. Um, particularly, you see that in America. And that's why I wouldn't want to, to go down that route. I think we need to have our police more engaging and more approachable in communities rather than more standoffish and you know, able to shoot people. Nathalie Goulet, I want your reaction to that, because we're going through a period where uh, relations between the police and citizens ha are, are, is, is not going well Hello. in France. Hello. We've had several standoffs. And uh, the idea that, uh, again, we get back to the issue of uh, it, it not being us versus them when it comes to, 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 be, to relations between citizens and their police. Yeah, it, it, it was much better before, but you know, under Nicolas Sarkozy, we cut a budget and, and uh, we get rid out of um, uh, 52,000 people, you know. So we need more people, we need more intelligence, that is very important. We need also to be able to track and to follow the information, because when somebody give a call, you, you have to follow this information. So what we need, I mean, the question of being armed or not, that is something different. I mean, it's a question of uh, society, and we have to discuss about it. But what is for sure, and that we, we need more cooperation with the society and the policeman, because it's from the ground that you get the information, that you feel the people, that you can react um, mm. very quickly. So we need more people, but at different stage, not only with gun in the street, not only with sentinel of a state of emergency, but we also need to uh, interact 
with the population. So it's why we need more people and more people for intelligence, because intelligence is, is the most important, the heart of the of the uh, how to fight. You have two ways. You have intelligence and you have to track financing of terrorism. That are the most important things. More more important than criminal regulation, believe me, because the people they get radicalized in jail. So you don't solve the problem. This radicalization that you described, Nathalie Goulet, is it something we heard at the outset, Nikita Malik mentioning how she's talking, again, putting the emphasis on the fact that these are UK citizens. In the case of France, obviously, it's mostly French citizens carrying this out. Is oh, it yes. A, it's a yeah. French problem. French, and then uh, 40% of those people are converted into, into Muslim faith for the sake of radicalization. So we, we, have a, we have a real problem, and nobody still now carefully on the question of conversion, which is very important, very important, because it's a base, you know, of the, of the problem. So it's, it's as I'm born, they were born in France and raised in France. It's a failure of our educational system, which is also in the, in the heart of the solution. Uh, we're seeing uh, Simon Schofield uh, uh, among the uh, campaign issues that have come up in the last 24 to 48 hours. Both the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn and the Liberal Democrat leader Tim Farron uh, asking about foreign funding and challenging the Prime Minister uh, over a long delayed inquiry into foreign funding in support of, of jihadi groups. Is that a sideshow? Is that a red herring? Uh, what possible role foreign states could have, most notably? from the Gulf? Not at all. I think it's it's a very key point that we need to be pursuing, uh, particularly Saudi Arabia, which is uh, you know a country that is largely considered a Western ally, and, and yet is the promulgator of of this ideology of Wahhabism, which is the you know it's the toxic spring from which most of these things fall. The vast majority of terrorists who are committing atrocities on behalf of ISIS and everybody uh, these similar groups are are Sunni in nature. So whilst you might rightly say that Iran is perhaps the greatest greatest sponsor of um, state sponsor of terrorism, the wellspring of this particular ideology is Saudi Arabia. The wellspring is Saudi Arabia. Simon, what's your reaction to the the other uh, big news story of the day is the Saudis accusing the Qataris of sponsoring terrorism and severing ties with them? Absolutely. I'm I, I think that there probably are issues with Qatar sponsoring um, groups which are engaged in extremism, and I certainly wouldn't want to take a side on, on, the, on the conflict in that sense, but it, it's very much pot calling kettle black in this sense because there is no greater sponsor in ideological terms of this kind of ideology, certainly the kind that is sending fighters to our shores or growing them in our cities, than Saudi Arabia. Even though ISIS is a sworn enemy of the Saudis. Very much so, but uh, the the ideology all comes from from the same place. All, all comes from the same place. Uh, Nathalie Goulet, uh, we've just had a, a spate of elections uh, with on the campaign trail politicians who say uh, they're going to talk tough to the Gulf states. We saw with Donald Trump's recent visits to uh, to uh, Saudi Arabia that uh, it was different once he was in office. Is it going to be different in the case of France? How should the French? be handling uh, Gulf states? Well, you know, but first of all, I'm leading the friendship group in the French Senate for the GCC. So, but, you know, I'm in a position to, to tell you that, uh, first of all, we, we solve a lot of problems with financing coming from the GCC for, for the Muslim community. And, uh, and I think it's a global problem because, you know, they are our lie against terrorism. But at the same time, we have the problem of the um, Muslim Brotherhood, which is also a big issue in the in, uh, United Kingdom and all over in Egypt and Absolutely. wherever. So I think that we also have to, to work together because the GCC uh, did a lot of effort now. It's, it's quite recent to prevent uh, also terrorism and uh, stop the financing of terrorism, but, you know, we have still uh, side effects. Still s s side effects. Uh, it's uh, it's an open row. You say you're the head of the friendship group uh, with, with, with the GCC. It looks like you're going to have to be forced to pick sides almost when you see this row between the Saudis and the Qataris. Well, I hope we have not to make a sophie choice because in front of all that, you also have Iran. 
So, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't have to take part in these things. And we have, the, I think, that the, the, the GCC country have to solve and resolve that problem by themselves. You know, because all that is also against Iran on the other side of the Persian Gulf. So we have to be very careful. Are, are we getting away from the topic at hand, Simon Schofield, when we talk about what's going on in the Gulf? I, I think it has something to, to do with it. But as, as has been discussed, a lot of the extremists we are dealing with right now are homegrown. So whilst it's important to tackle the financing abroad and to tackle the ideological spread abroad, we also need to have a greater focus at home. It's not a silver bullet that if we stop Qatar and Saudi um, funding and, and promoting these groups that it will suddenly end here. But I think an important focus is to look at what Muslims themselves say. Um, there was a policy exchange paper published. It was the largest ever survey of, of British Muslims in conjunction with ICM. And um, Muslims are actually more likely than the average Brit to condemn violent extremism. But and, and more than 50 percent of Muslims feel that their own community, Muslim community, should be doing more to challenge this ideology. And they feel, and Eliza Manning and Buller, who used to be the director general of MI5, agrees that Muslims should be taking a lead role in this. Last week, uh, when it was uh, Manchester, now with London, are you hearing more from the Muslim community? I, I don't think we've ever not been hearing from them. You know, all these attacks, you see the Muslim Council of, of Britain and, and other groups um, condemning it. You see people, I, I have um, Muslim friends on social media who, uh, who are condemning it and are saying, what is going on? Uh, there, there is a, a huge amount of, of condemnation, of shock, of, of despair in the moderate um, Muslim community uh, as, as everywhere else. I think what we need to do is help support these moderate Muslims in whichever ways um, are appropriate to help them take back control of their faith, which is being you know, perverted towards these violent aims. It's being perverted towards violent aims that we've seen the, 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 like, the comments on, you know, on social media, uh, which are, are uh, extremely hateful at times. Uh, it, it must be very difficult right now in the UK uh, when you've had a third attack in less than three months. It's it's very difficult. It's you know people are people are concerned. People are not unduly concerned, but there is a, a degree of blitz spirit as well. I think you know if you, if you can see uh, photos from the nineteen forties um, of of how we dealt with the way the Nazis treated us, and you know they had a lot more to throw at us than than Islamic State does. I have a lot of faith that we will endure. A lot of faith we will endure. Uh, Simon Schofield, I want to thank you for joining us from Bristol. We want to thank Nikita Malik for being with us from London. Nathalie Goulet from Argentan in Normandy. Stay with us because Media Watch is next. <laughs> 